Welcome ladies and gentlemen, this is Skaggy Bones back with another video and today we have a custom Diamondback response for you, okay? And as you can see, this isn't a sport or a comp, even though it looks closer to a comp. This is, this frame, it looks very similar to a comp but it's the response that they made for Dick's Sporting Goods and pretty much everything on here, nothing stock anymore other than the frame, the seat post, and the forks. So I'm going to kind of go through this bike with you, give you a walk around, show you what we've done differently on it. I have certain reviews on some of these parts. I needed to put some bigger tires, some slightly wider tires, some better tires on here. And so I did that and decided I was going to post up this video, kind of an overview of the bike, kind of everything we got on it. So let us begin. So, you won't be really seeing me. I'm going to be taking the camera off the tripod. And, uh,. go and kind of doing in some close-up work as we walk around the bike here so as you can see here it is a Diamondback uh, response uh, this is a 2013 frame model uh, one thing you'll notice that I did I got a hole there and in the bottom that I drilled specifically for the seat or for a um, for a dropper post the dropper post I had was kind of junk I had a very old dropper post and I had to throw it away but pretty much what happened is the dropper post went all the way through the bottom and came up and came out a hole came back up through the tube up here came out that hole there and had the dropper post switch up here okay but I'm not using it anymore but I still got those holes okay so this is a large frame as you can see there's not a whole lot of drop there from the front uh, from the steer tube uh, back to the seat post there's hardly any drop there uh, especially on the top tube with the standover height. So it is a large frame. It's quite a big frame. This is a 26er. This isn't a 27.5 or a 29er that they make now. They actually made these in a 29er. Um, I'm not sure if they ever made the response in a 26. Or sorry, 27.5. So this is a 26. I have put some giant SXC two wheels on these. I had to get these as a set because the original wheels that I had were for a free hub. Um, Vice a standard hub in the back and so when I got this group set I just had to buy new wheels. Okay. Uh, so got the new wheels. These really work great. They're not a super high-end pair of wheels. They run approximately 300 bucks for the set they are DT Swiss hubs and they are sealed bearing hubs so they are very good hubs uh, the wheels you can get a, a better rim uh, from Giant in fact you can get quite a bit better uh, rim set from Giant but these aren't too bad uh, they are they are tubeless ready I'm not running tubeless right at this point uh, but the plan is to run tubeless here in the next month or so okay Brakes got changed out, and as you can see here, we have the Elixir 3s. Those are the caliper, brake calipers. There's the brake handles. This is a replacement bar uh, right here. This is a Giant uh, Contact SL. A lot of Giant out where I'm at here, so a lot of my upgrades from in-shop or from from the bike shop just was a lot of giant stuff and it's not too expensive so this is a 740 mil wide bar uh, quite a bit 
wider than the stock bar that came with it that was only 640 so gaining an extra 40 millimeter or 100 millimeters on this handlebar okay nice oversized very lightweight aluminum we also have a contact SL stem and this is their oversized stem the giant makes it is a uh, I believe 30 degree angle up and it is a 72 mil stem but because it is 30 degree up the point between here and here is only 45 mil or 50 mil something like that it's it's very short so you're not going to get uh, the only way you're going to get a smaller stem is uh, lengthwise out to the bars is if you go with a downhill stem uh, so I really like this stem brings brings the handlebars up really high uh, and it the bar is pretty far in okay still running this the standard uh, Sun Tour 100 mil uh, 30 mil stanchions 100 mil travel XCT just basic basic uh, coil sprung fork uh, nothing fancy I want to be upgrading that pretty soon but uh, they're getting they're they're kind of expensive especially for the quick release but I might end it and then if I go with something the through axle I'm gonna have to upgrade the wheel as well so I really don't want to have to do that right this point because that's a lot of money okay the next thing we have here as you can see seat post wise oh, oh sorry back back over to the the cockpit I got some uh, top cabin uh, lock-on grips just basic lock-on grips nothing super fancy um, bar ends I had a problem with the the top cabin for these handlebars they're because they're the SL they're the 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 lightest aluminum that uh, giant makes and very thin aluminum so the standard bar ends don't fit in here so I had to take my road bike bar ends from uh, lizard skin and those popped in and fit perfectly so they're super tight they won't pop out and then of course the red kind of I never use these on my road bikes I got some bolt-in ones so these work perfect so like those lock double locking grips they work really well as you can see here we have the standard Shimano Alivio brake le or shifting levers uh, standard uh, nine speed uh, as you can see from the back uh, this is because it is a trample crank in the front I'm only running a 1134 I believe yep 1134 in the back nothing fancy I'm gonna probably upgrade this to shop here has a uh, 9 speed 1140s so I'm probably gonna upgrade to that and then switch this to a 2 by okay and just get a race face a couple race face cranks in the front and get a upgrade kit so probably for 40 bucks I can get upgrade kit for the front to buy and then I can just convert the nice thing is with this this front derailleur the Shimano derailleur this actually you can run it as a two by there's a little uh, switch mechanism in there there's a little pin you put in I got the screw for it and it turns it into a two by okay and then uh, when you put the limit screws on it just prevents the front shifter from shifting more than twice okay so, like I said, we got a nine speed in the back, which is fine for what I do uh, out here. Uh, in fact, this works for most climbing. Like I said, I just want to get rid of one of the gears in the front. Uh, as you can see, we also got the Crank Brothers. I swear by the Crank Brothers pedals. So I got the Crank Brother, Crank Brother egg beater pedals on here. Those are just the standard stainless steel, so about $100 pedals, but really like those standard uh, FSA bottle cage nothing fancy I do have uh, the frame pump I got is a bond trigger and it has the gauge on it so I really like that and it's for both Presta and Schrader valve uh, but it's a nice large pump get get a good grip on it you can I, I have to have the gauge because I change the tire pressure quite often when I'm on the trails okay uh, as you can see I've changed out from the last time last video I did I've changed out my tires and I went with a 2.6 uh, inch tire so instead of the 2 inch tire that I had before these are 2.6 point uh, a little bit more than a half inch uh, thicker they are also the Kendas uh, I had Kenda claws before 
These are the Kenda Kinetics. Uh, they're, they're, the nice thing about these, these are a puncture, very highly puncture proof tire. I still run the tire liner with them right now because I'm not running. Uh, but uh, these are a stickier tire, uh, very, uh, a little bit softer. I wouldn't say so soft as you're going to wear them down very quick, but they are a nice sticky tread uh, without being too overly soft and uh, they're very wear resistant. Uh, so these are great tires. A lot of good things about these. These aren't a folding tire, so uh, I'll try to do a video for you guys, but getting these things on is, is kind of tough the first time, especially if they've been sitting for a while. These being their 26 inch, they've been sitting in the bike shop for a while. I got a good discount on these, but uh, so I have to wear these in a little bit because they're a little lopsided on the, the wheel. And so over time, uh, my trick for doing that is I overpressure, not overpressurize them, I pump them up beyond uh, the the lowest end which is 30 PSI uh, I always run, run my tires by the way at the low end so minus 5 so my other tires the min spec was 40 PSI and I was running them at 35 these they're 30 min PSI and I'm running these at 25 so what I do is I first pump them up to about 35 I let them form out I ride them a couple times uh, for about 15-20 minutes and then I lower the pressure little by little and then they form right into place and then they become more even so they're not floating back and forth. The bigger the tire and the more and the heavier the bead is, so if you have a wire bead tire at first they're going to kind of float back and forth and it's not, the, it's not your wheel that's out of true, it's the, the, the tire is, is on there and it's so big that it just kind of floats back and forth. So, Hopefully get a video out for you guys on that, on how to kind of fix that. But love these tires so far. As you can see, I don't have much clearance for anything else in the back, so I really couldn't put a three inch tire in the back. So this 2.6 is about as big as I can get. Try to zoom in there. As you can see, I don't have a whole lot more clearance there in the back, and that's almost touching. And if it was, I could probably squeeze another I could probably get a, a 2.7 in here, but they'd be almost rubbing in the back. So the front, we got plenty of room. I could definitely squeeze a three inch tire in the front, but it's the back where you, you want a little bit wider tire, you get a little bit more grip in the back. Okay, for uh, chain, I'm just running a standard Shimano uh, Alivio chain. We got the Alivio group set. This is uh, a Holotech 2. Uh, crank set so it, it does run the external bottom bracket as you can see there and the bottom bracket is the next one up it's a Diora uh, bottom bracket and I am running it with I believe one spacer on one side so one spacer on the drive side no spacers on the non-drive side so perfect right there um, one thing, other thing that I might upgrade to is in the back switch to a clutch mech. And if we go to the two in the front, this possibly go to a small chain catcher on the bottom. They have one that are made for the two by drive chains on the front. Uh, also possible, I've thought about going to a 46 in the back, 1146 in the back and just going to one by in the front and then throwing a chain catcher on there. But we'll see how the two by system works first. Uh, on the top, as far as, uh, of course, like I said before, I'm running the standard seat, seat post until I get a new dropper post. Giant has a new dropper post out that's about $100. Very good dropper post. And it's, I don't remember who makes it. I think Crank Brothers might actually make it for them. But it's an excellent dropper post, a very budget dropper post. And it's one of the only dropper posts I can get out here without having to order it that they, they carry at the shop where I get all my stuff from. Uh, seat, I've had this saddle for quite a while. This is one of my favorite of the mountain bike saddles and it's not a super high end expensive saddle, it's just got chromoly rails on it, but it's a Bond Traeger uh, size specific saddle. So I went in to one of my shops in Virginia that I go to, Bike Beat, and they, they did a fitting for me on this saddle and this is a saddle that fits me the best. So it doesn't have any cutouts, but it does have some relief spots here 
works really good. I have it angled back a little bit. As you can see, it's not perfect. It's not angled forward. It's not neutral. It's just angled back just a little bit. Uh, it has a little bit of rise there. Dips down a little bit and rises up in the front. I really like this saddle. It uh, kind of gives me a lot of comfort. Uh, and uh, like I said, I want the dropper post because I do drop this down all the way and I raise it up a little bit higher than this from time to time if I'm doing any climbing. But this is my standard position for riding this bike. I don't like to be too high up on the bike itself. So, only other thing extra that I've done is, as you can see down here, I've kind of done a custom little chain uh, stay protector. I take an inner tube. I run the inner tube, and then I take some uh, electrician's tape, tape it around there, run a couple zip ties on here, and uh, that works really good for me. Uh, you can get uh, some nice giant neoprene ones that work really good. I've thought about doing, doing that, but until this gets all torn up, this has worked great for me. In fact, I've been hitting this thing, and it just, it just doesn't bang this up at all, so it works really good. So... Okay, folks, that's it for the, the bike tour, the custom bike uh, tour with the Diamondback Response. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you liked it, give us a thumbs up, and uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button up above, and like always, keep riding.